Melissa from Porch Swing Creations. Today I want to share with you a new way to use your alcohol-based markers and it's so that you can color on black cardstock. A little bit different technique than just coloring on white background and it adds a little bit more dramatic effect. So let's get started. All you're going to need for this technique is a piece of black cardstock, you're going to need Versamark ink, you're going to need a white embossing powder, and you're going to need a solid stamped image of your choice. And the reason you want it solid is so that none of that black background shows through your image when you go to color. So the first thing you're going to do is ink up your stamp using the Versamark ink. Go ahead and line it up, stamp your image, you're just going to want to cover that with your white embossing powder. If you want, you can always use an embossing buddy or something that takes away some of that static, but I don't mind a little bit of that showing through because I think it kind of adds a vintage look to this type of image that I'm using. So once you have that done, you're going to want to heat set it. So I'll just quickly do that. Once you have it heat set, you're now ready to begin coloring with your alcohol-based markers. And the reason you want to use alcohol-based markers is because once they hit this embossing powder, they're not going to rub off like a water-based marker might if you were trying to do the same technique. So I'm going to begin um, by coloring in the branches. So the way I like to do it is I like to start with the darkest color that I want to use first. And I'm just going to go along the edges where I think that the darker color may be. So I'll just quickly do the branches here for you to see. I'm not going to do that nest area yet, I'm just going to focus on the branches. So from there I'm just going to move down to maybe a lighter color and I'm going to slightly blend those two colors together. You can always go back in with a darker color after if it's not as dark as you like. It comes, sometimes it takes a little bit of layering to get this to the look that you are going for. Okay, so we have our second shade down. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit lighter shade. You can see it kind of adds like a really neat texture almost, kind of looks realistic in how a tree branch might have kind of ridges and lines and knot holes in it. So I'm going to go back in now with my darkest shade that I was using and I'm just going to retouch those edges that I wanted to be the darkest in the beginning. And you can see how it really shades those branches. Okay. So once you have that the way you like it, I'm going to start working on the nest. So this time I'm going to do a little bit different technique. I want to build lightest to darkest this time because I want to have the center of that nest kind of light so that it creates um, 
the the appearance of depth in the nest. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to shade that all in in a light brown color. And then I'm going to take a deeper color and I'm just going to slowly start building in the edges. And I'm going to leave the center of that nest very light and I'm not going to touch it. And you can see as I start to build the color, the center of that nest is staying quite light and the outer edges are becoming darker. And it's good in this technique because it's a nest, you kind of want to make it look like little pieces of straw. So I'm doing short flick strokes to give the appearance of that. And then I'm just going to build up again. I'm going to go to my next darkest shade of brown and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to work where I'd like it to be the darkest. And that's probably just around the center of that opening along the very back edge of the nest. And then now I'm going to go in with my very darkest color and I'm just going to shade the outer edges. And again, that short flicking stroke so that it really gives the appearance of straw in the nest. And you can keep building with this. You can always go back now that our colors on the branches are dry, you can go back in with your darkest brown and um, just add a few more shadows so you can see that kind of comes together. So now I'm going to move on to the leaves and in this instance I just chose to do two shades of green. So I'm going to choose um, a darker shade and kind of a medium tone shade. And I'm going to start with the lighter shade this time. And I'm just going to color all the leaves. The great part about this technique is that you don't have to be too concerned about coloring outside the lines because you're coloring on black cardstock and it's not going to be noticeable as it would be on a lighter colored cardstock, which is nice sometimes. It lets the technique be quick and simple without too much fuss, even though in the end it looks like you put a lot of fuss and time into it. So I have that lightest green laid down. Now I'm going to go in with the darker green and I'm just going to do the same thing. I want to just add, add a little bit of that dark green where I might think that there might be more shadow, leaving that lighter color show through as the highlight. So just kind of like along the bottom edges or along the side of each little leaf. It doesn't take long. You can see how quick that it's coming together. Depending on the image you choose, more detailed images are obviously going to take a little bit longer. And again, you can let this dry and then go back in and do a second um, layer of the green just to add a little bit more. You can see this, this side's already been given a little bit extra time to dry, so it's taking that color more now. It depends how much you want it to blend and how much you want there to be a distinction between your two colors if you want it to be all completely blended. Do it when it's still damp from the previous color. If not, you can see here this darker brown is hardly uh, blended at all because I added it after everything else had dried and set. So now we're going to do the two little birds. So for this, on, the, on my examples, I did little yellow tummies. So I'm just going to lay down medium toned yellow where the belly might be and then I'm going to color in the entire bird with um, a lighter blue so I'll just lay that color down okay. then I'm going to go in with a medium tone blue and I'm just I want to leave the highlight kind of on the bird's back so I'm going to take this shade I'm just going to run it along that tummy 
and kind of along the top of the head, leaving that back exposed with the lighter color. So we have that color, and then I'm going to take the deepest blue, and I'm going to go just along the tummy and along the bottom of that tail feather. And then you can see it didn't really blend very well, so I'm going to go back to my lightest shade, and I'm just going to lightly blend those colors together. You can see it's still left that light blue as a highlight, but it's helped blend all three of those shades together. And if you ever think that you've laid too much color down, you can always go in with your color lifter and just lightly rub along those edges where you want a little bit more light. Then I'm going to take um, a soft orange and I'm just going to quickly color in the little beak. So that image is pretty much done. Then in my example image, I've kind of created an ombre effect where it's lighter to darker on the wording. So to do that, you're first going to take any shade that you like. In this case, I've chosen um, some lighter purples. I'm going to take the lightest shade of the purple, and I'm going to quickly just run across the entire lettering. You can be a little bit more fussy about how you do this so that it doesn't show on the black, but just for time purposes, I'm just going to run it quickly across here. So you just want to cover the entire wording. Okay. Then you want to take either a medium toned or a mid toned of the same shade, and you're just going to lightly color in the bottom of all of that lettering. And again, you can be as picky and time-consuming as you like. And then, of course, the longer you take, the better it's going to look. But you can get the gist. Okay. There we go. So there you have your image now colored on black cardstock, which is, I think, so much more dramatic than just on plain white cardstock all the time. So to finish this card, all I've done is I've cut and cut, sorry, another square, slightly larger, and it, this one was out of a soft yellow color so that I could kind of bring out the belly color of the birds. And then to cut my card base, you can see I have the scalloped edge. Well, I used the, the square framelits from Stamping Up, and this is the largest that comes in the set. So what I did is I cut my card base, I scored it and folded it, folded it in half, and then when I laid it on my Big Shot machine, I laid it down so that the upper edge of the framelit was hanging off the fold of the card base so that when I ran it through the big shot this section wouldn't cut just the three sides would cut which gives me this unique shaped card base so from there it was just as simple as gluing it on and you've got a completed card I hope you enjoyed this technique if you'd like to see any others you can visit my blog at www dot porch swing creations dot com. I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day. Thanks.